Jehovah has loved Israel with an everlasting love. At the same time, said the Lord, will I be the God of all the families of Israel, and they shall be my people. Thus saith the Lord, the people which were left of the sword found grace in the wilderness, even Israel, when I went to cause him to rest. The Lord hath appeared of old unto me, saying, Yea, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness have I drawn thee. Again I will build thee, and thou shalt be built, O virgin of Israel. Thou shalt again be adorned with thy tabrets, and shalt go forth in the dances of them that make merry. And concerning that people, his gifts and calling are without repentance. For I would not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery, lest ye should be wise in your own conceits, that blindness in part is happened to Israel, until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. And so all Israel shall be saved. As it is written, There shall come out of Zion the Deliverer, and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. For this is my covenant unto them, when I shall take away their sins. As concerning the gospel, they are enemies for your sakes. But as touching the election, they are beloved for the Father's sakes. For the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. In accordance with this eternal purpose, they are to be regathered, restored, and preserved forever. And they shall bring all your brethren for an offering unto the Lord out of all nations, upon horses, and in chariots, and in litters, and upon mules, and upon swift beasts, to my holy mountain Jerusalem, saith the Lord as the children of Israel bring an offering in a clean vessel into the house of the Lord. And I will also take of them for priests and for Levites, saith the Lord. For as the new heavens and the new earth which I will make shall remain before me, saith the Lord, so shall your seed and your name remain. And it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another, and from one Sabbath to another, shall all flesh come to worship before me, saith the Lord. Thus saith the Lord, which giveth the sun for a light by day, and the ordinances of the moon and of the stars for a light by night, which divideth the sea when the waves thereof roar, the Lord of hosts is his name. If those ordinances depart from before me, saith the Lord, then the seed of Israel also shall cease from being a nation before me forever. Thus saith the Lord, if heaven above can be measured, and the foundations of the earth searched out beneath, I will also cast off all the seed of Israel for all that they have done, saith the Lord. Jehovah has loved Israel with an everlasting love, as we saw in Jeremiah 31. And concerning that people, his gifts and calling are without repentance, as we saw in Romans 11. In accordance with this eternal purpose, they are to be regathered, restored, and preserved forever, as we saw in Isaiah 66 and Jeremiah 31. When it is once comprehended that God has an elect nation to whom he has made irrevocable covenants, which covenants are eternal in character, there will be a readiness of mind to follow the divine plan for this people through time and into eternity. I want to read the last part of that quote again. When it is once comprehended that God has an elect nation to whom he has made irrevocable covenants, which covenants are eternal in character, there will be a readiness of mind to follow the divine plan for this people through time and into eternity. I just want to pop on here and say, you know, if you want to discover what Israel's destiny is, read the Bible, folks. It's in there extensively, in very much detail. It's not very hard to understand. And for the whack balls who are obsessed with trying to teach that this present age somehow fulfills that era. It's stupid. It's the most stupid theory I ever heard. <laughs> it's the dumbest doctrine there is.
Another means to clarification of mind is found in the separation in one's thinking of the Jews, the Gentiles, and the Church of God. These three classes of humanity are to be traced from their beginnings on through time and into eternity. Apart from the calling of individual Jews and individual Gentiles out from their original estate to form the church, these groups never lose their identity, nor are they merged into something else. Israel has never been the church, is not the church now, nor will she ever be the church. A form of covenant theology which would thread all of Jehovah's purposes and undertakings upon his one attribute of grace could hardly avoid confusion of mind in matters related to his varied objectives 